Hello students, welcome to Pathophysiology. The topic of lecture today is the disorders of the metabolism, part 2. Uh, we will talk about the water electrolyte disbalance, acid alkaline disbalance and um, disturbance of the mineral vitamin metabolism and so on. Water is the main component of the body. Water is a 60% of adult body weight and approximately 80% of the child's body weight. Uh, the daily requirement is a 2 2.5 liters. In early childhood, uh, the body's need for water is 2-3 times greater than in adults. With age, the total volume of water in the body decreases. If the amount of the water entering the body exceeds, the amount of the water released. This is called the positive water balance. In a negative water balance, the excretion of water from the body prevails over its intake. 75% of all water inside in the cells and 25% uh, outside of cells is in the intercellular fluid, blood and lymph. Despite the electrolyte composition of the intra and extracellular fluid is different from each other, the body fluid is in the state of osmotic equilibrium. The extracellular fluid contains more sodium, chlorine, calcium, bicarbonate ions, and intracellular medium contains ions of potassium, the magnesium, phosphorus, and etc. In various pathologies, an increase or decrease in the amount of intracellular and extracellular fluid is observed. The center of water electrolyte uh, regulation located in anterior part of the hypothalamus. Regulation of water metabolism consists of afferent, central, and efferent stages. Afferent impulses from uh, various receptors that are the chemoreceptors, osmobara, chemoreceptors, they are located in the various organs and tissues, for example, the mucous membranes of digestive tract, blood vessels, and other. All they are transmitted in the hypothalamic neurons, center of water regulation. Then these impulses are transmitted to the departments of the uh, cerebral cortex, uh, which are involved in the emergence of the feeling of thirst and the water comfort. Uh, this is a main thing as a central stage. At the same time, at this time, a person has a feeling of the thirst or abandonment of the water. Uh, at the efferent stage, the regulation of water metabolism, the kidneys, sweet glands, intestine, and lungs participate. These organs ensure the stability of water and electrolyte equilibrium. The endocrine system plays an important role in the regulation of the water balance in the body and the, its uh, distribution between tissues. Change in the volume circulating blood, blood thickening or dilution, the change in the concentration of electrolytes in, in tissues if affect the secretion of aldosterone, antidiuretic hormone, that's vasopressin, a natriuretic hormone of the atria, atriopeptide, and adrenaline. As a result of decrease in the volume of circulating blood, the volume receptors located in the atria uh, on the inner surface of the carotid artery and the brain are irritated, and the impulses enter the hypothalamus, then the pituitary gland. At this time, an increase in uh, the adrenocorticotropic hormone secretion leads to the, an increase in aldosterone synthesis in the adrenal cortex. Uh, in the regulation of the aldosterone secretion, the renin angiotensin system plays an important role. Renin is a substance with proteolytic activity that synthesizes in kidneys. Decreasing of the blood supply to kidneys, activation of sympathetic adrenal system, hyponatremia, all these increase release of renin into the blood. Renin converts angiotensinogen into the angiotensin 1. And these, uh, with, participation, uh, uh, with the participation of the convertase, the enzyme convertase, which formed in the capillaries of the lungs, uh, from angiotensin 1, angiotensin 2 is formed. Angiotensin 2 narrows arterioles and increases blood pressure stimulates the secretion of aldosterone. The mechanism of action of aldosterone at the cellular level is that aldosterone passes into the renal tubular epithelium, combines with a specific protein receptor, and enters the nucleus, 
where they activate the genes that encode the proteins that make sodium, potassium, uh, hydrogen pumps. As a result, aldosterone increases the reabsorption of sodium and secretion of the potassium and hydrogen ions in distal convoluted nephrons. Another hormone involved in regulation of the water metabolism is the antidiuretic hormone. The secretion of this hormone is stimulated by two mechanisms, the osmotic mechanism and hemodynamic mechanism. In osmotic mechanism, an increase in the osmotic pressure of the blood, osmoreceptors located in the inner surface of the blood vessels are irritated, and the next mechanism is the hemodynamic mechanism here. Decreasing of the volume of the circulating blood irritates volume and baroreceptors. And impulses come from these receptors passes the paraventricular and the supra, uh, supra optic nuclei of the hypothalamus. And this leads to the stimulation of the antidiuretic hormone synthesis. From here, antidiuretic hormone enters to the narrow hypothesis and then into the blood. Antidiuretic hormone binds to the V2 receptors because the another name of this hormone is vasopressin and the corresponding the receptors called V receptors. And when antidiuretic hormone binds to the V2 receptors, they located on the epithelial cells of the collected tubulars of the kidneys, opens up water channels that called aquaporin in the epithelial cells and accelerates water uh, the reabsorption. Antidiuretic hormone in low concentration has an antidiuretic effect. In high concentration, it causes uh, vasoconstriction and an increase in blood pressure. The um, vasoconstrictive effect of antidiuretic hormone is associated with the attachment to V1 receptors on the vascular wall. By this way, it accelerates the transition of the calcium into the cytoplasm, which leads to the contra contraction of the small uh, muscle cells. Therefore, the another name of this hormone is vasopressin. Disturbance of water balance is called dyshydria. There are two types of dyshydria, dehydration, dehydration uh, or uh, the exocosis uh, or hypohydria, all they have the same meaning and dehydration can be intracellular and extracellular. And the uh, water retention in the body, hyperhydria, uh, either may be intracellular and extracellular. Depending on change of in the osmotic pressure of the body's liquids, Dehydration and also hyperhydration occur in three forms, isoosmolar, hypoosmolar, and hyperosmolar. Uh, dehydration or uh, the exocosis is characterized by negative water balance. Dehydration can occur for several reasons, for example, vomiting, diarrhea, bleeding, or the uh, polyuriating, diabetes, diabetes in situs, the intense uh, sweating, hyperthermia, fever, hyperventilation, and so on. In dehydration, a loss of the extracellular fluid and sodium ions is first observed and decreasing of the extracellular fluid follows with compensatory uh, the cause uh, to some compensatory reactions as uh, the activation of renin angiotensis system the decreasing of the sweating the passage of fluid from the interstitial space into the vessels increases secretion of the aldosterone increases secretion of the antidiuretic hormone a decrease in the blood volume leads to the irritation of the volume receptors and an increase in the secretion of antidiuretic hormone. Due to the fact that uh, antidiuretic hormone increases the reabsorption of water, uh, it delays the, its excretion from the body. Depletion of the, these, all these compensatory mechanisms may lead to the increasing of the osmotic pressure in the intercellular space and the water process from cells into the intracellular space and from there to the blood. Intracellular dehydration occurs in this, uh, in this uh, case and at this time uh, the concentration of electrolytes inside the cell increase. 
due to reduce the uh, solubility of the proteins they sediment. Due to a decrease in the water content inside the cell, the decrease in uh, volume and the surface area of the membrane decreases. As a result, intracellular communications and the reception of the regulatory signals are disrupted. Intracellular dehydration of neurons of the central nervous system lead to the loss of consciousness, hallucinations, and even to the coma. Water retention in the body or hyperhydration is characterized by a positive water balance. And uh, this develops uh, for uh, several reasons. Excessive intake of water when the patient is uh, intravenously injected with a large uh, amount, large volume of the liquid. And uh, during disturbance of water excretion by kidneys, for example, in renal failure, secondary hyperaldosteronism and increased secretion of the, uh, the um, antidiuretic hormone. All these may lead to the hyperhydration. And even hyperhydration uh, lead to the development of the edema. Edema is one of the most common forms of hyperhydration. Edema is a typical pathological process accompanied by the accumulation of excess fluid in the interstitial space as a result of disturbance of water balance between blood and tissues. Sometimes there, are, uh, there is an accumulation of fluid inside the cell which is called intracellular edema. The accumulation of the fluid in the body cavities, uh, cavities uh, are called hydrops. Hydrops of the abdominal cavity is called ascites. And the accumulation of the uh, fluid in the pleural cavity called hydrothorax. In the pericardial cavity, hydropericardium. Accumulation of excess fluid in the ventricles of brain uh, called, is called hydrocephalus. And in the pathogenesis of edema, two stages are distinguished. At the first stage, they accumulate the water which bound with the tissue colloids, for example, with collagen. And edematous fluid, transudate, combines with tissue colloids and accumulate in gel-like structures. Collagen fiber, the main uh, substance of connective tissue. And clinical signs of edema are weak in this, uh, the first stage. At the second stage, free water accumulates. If amount of bound water increases uh, the more than 30 percentage, free water uh, accumulates. Manifestation of edema are more expressed here in the uh, second stage, and during pressure compression of the tissue, the symptom of the fossa or hole symptom uh, is formed. You see in this slide. This slide show us the uh, mechanisms of development of the edemas. And according to pathogenic mechanisms, the uh, hydrostatic mechanism, membranous mechanism, oncotic, osmotic mechanism, and lymphogenic mechanisms of the formation of edema, edemas are now. The hydrostatic edema is formed as a result of increase in hydrostatic pressure in the capillaries. Uh, this type of edema develops as a result of an increase in blood volume, an increase in the venous pressure, and microcirculation disturbances. For example, in heart failure, secondary hyperaldosteronism, and etc. Hydrostatic edema begins from the lower parts of the body. Uh, then, oncotic edemas or hypoproteinemic, hypoproteinemic edema. Uh, is formed as a result of decreasing of the protein content of blood. In this case, the liquid part of the blood passes from the capillaries into the interstitial space. Starvation, uh, liver diseases, liver pathology, the acute renal failure, nephrotic syndrome, and other pathologies are accompanied by the development of the hypoproteinemic edema. Hypoproteinemic edema begins uh, from the upper part of the body and is predominantly common. Osmotic edema occurs in the increase in the osmolarity of interstitial fluid or decrease in the blood osmolarity. Factors that reduce the osmotic pressure of the blood plasma uh, are the, uh, the following. Increases secretion of antidiuretic hormone. Uh, the introduction of the large amount of the hypotonic fluid into the body, into the veins. Factors that increase the osmolarity of interstitial fluid include 
interstitial accumulation of sodium, potassium, calcium, ions, glucose, lactic acid, uh, and uh, accelerated uh, dissociation of the salt and organic compounds in the interstitial fluid, for example, on the condition of the hypoxia or acidosis. The next is uh, the membranous membrane uh, edema occur as a result of increase in vascular wall permeability. Moreover, uh, as a result of action of the various factors, for example, histamine, prostaglandins, kinins, uh, the, the nitrogen oxide, the transition of the liquid part of the blood to the interst intercellular space is accelerated. Allergic inflammatory toxic edema develops according to these mechanisms. And at last, lymphogenic edema occurs with impaired lymph circulation and interstitial fluid transfers through the lymph from the interstitial intercellular space is uh, disrupted. Depending on origin and clinical manifestation, cardiac edema, renal edema, which include nephrotic and nephritic edema, hepatic edema, allergic inflammatory edemas, pulmonary edema, and certain types of edemas are distinguished. And here you see the mechanism of development of cardiac, uh, cardiac edema that occurs in the heart failure. Due to decrease in the contractile function of the heart, cardiac output decreases and congestion occurs in the venous system. And due to the increase in the hydrostatic pressure in the veins, the reabsorption of the fluid from the intercellular space to the venous part of the capillaries slows down. As a result of arterial hypovolemia, the blood supply of the, uh, to the kidneys decreases. Uh, this leads to the uh, increase in the secretion of the aldosterone and antidiuretic hormone. Along with this, the synthesis of the enzymes inactivating these hormones in the liver decreases, uh, the, which causes a delay in the sodium and water in the body. In addition to in the condition of the arterial hypovolemia, Protein synthesis in the liver decreases, and this leads, this includes the oncotic mechanism of edema. An increase in venous pressure also affects lymph circulation. Due to the difficulty of the lymph flow, lymphatic flow, mechanical lymphatic insufficiency occurs. All this leads to an increase in the volume of interstitial fluid. Moreover, the circulatory failure leads to the hypoxia and acidosis. The permeability of the vascular wall increases, a lot of water and protein pass from the lumen of the vessels into, into the intercellular space. Thus, hydrostatic, osmotic, oncotic, membranogenic, the lymphogenic factors are involved in the development of cardiac edema. In case of right ventricular failure, due to congestion in the vena cava inferior, edema starts from the lower extremities and gradually mixes into the upper body. In the left ventricular failure, due to congestion in the pulmonary circulation, pulmonary edema de uh, develops. Increasing of the hydrostatic pressure in the vessel of the pulmonary circulation, the transudate passes into the intercellular space of the lungs and leads to the development of the interstitial pulmonary edema. Then accumulation of a large volume of edematous fluid in the interstitial uh, space, one of the, the part of the passes into the alveolar. Thus, alveolar edema develops. Pulmonary edema can also occur with pathologies that are not associated with the heart uh, failure, heart diseases. For example, the basis of the pulmonary edema in inflammatory lung diseases is an increase in the vascular volume permeability due to the action of the inflammatory mediators. Disturbance of acid-alkaline balance, acid-base balance. Normally, the pH of the blood undergoes change in a very low limits. Arterial blood pH is on average 7.4 and due to the transition of acidic uh, metabolic products into the venous system, the venous blood pH is 7.35. The shift of acid-base balance to the acidic side is called acidosis and shift to the alkaline side is called alkalosis. A decrease in arterial blood pH 
to 7.35 is considered compensated acidosis, and an increase to 7.45 is uh, considered compensated alkalosis. A change in the pH of medium beyond these figures uh, lead to the uncompensated uh, acidosis and alkalosis. If the blood pH is above 7.8 and below uh, 6.8, this may lead to the death of the organism. And in, uh, the uh, acid-base balance is uh, regulated by uh, physical chemical buffer systems that are bicarbonate, phosphate, protein, hemoglobin buffer system, and the physiological buffer systems that are lungs, kidneys, and gastrointestinal uh, tract, and uh, other. This slide shows us the main indexes of the acid-base balance. Uh, they are the pH of blood, and the norm is the 7.35, 7.45, and the partial pressure of the carbon dioxide is uh, 35, 45 millimeter mercury. Then the SB, standard bicarbonate. Uh, this index of the standard plasma bicarbonate in, nor in the norm is uh, 22, 26 millimeter per liter. And some additional indexes, for example, BB, uh, the buffer base, uh, this, in, uh, this index is the uh, sum of the standard bicarbonates and the other anions uh, in the blood plasma. Uh, and it normally is uh, 40, 48 millimeter per liter. And BE, uh, buffer excess, uh, this, uh, this index shows the differences between the normal and established in the index of uh, explosive. And in the norm, it's uh, 2.5 millimole per liter. According to the mechanisms, gaseous uh, and non-gaseous uh, types of acidosis and alkalosis are distinguished. Gaseous means respiratory, and non-gaseous means metabolic. Accumulation of the carbon dioxide in the blood, for example, during hypoventilation, leads to the respiratory or gaseous type of acidosis. And accelerated elimination of the carbon dioxide from the body, for example, during hyperventilation, may lead to the respiratory uh, alkalosis, uh, gaseous alkalosis. Non-gaseous or metabolic acidosis is observed in excess concentration of the acid substances in organism, and non-gaseous metabolic alkalosis occurs in cases of administration of the alkalis or the loss of the large amount of the acid products from the organism. And uh, it should be noted that the gaseous acidosis, hypercapnia, uh, the, uh, during here, the ability of the hemoglobin uh, to be connected with the oxygen is decreased, and less oxygen is given to the tissue, which means hypoxia. Oxidation process can't be completed, and this may lead to the development of the metabolic acidosis. Gaseous acidosis may be observed in cases of the weakening of the respiratory center, asphyxia, uh, then chronic uh, disease of lungs, disturbance of blood circulation, increase of the carbon dioxide in the inspired uh, air, all they may lead to the formation of the gaseous acidosis. And hypercapnia leads to the development of number of compensatory reactions in the organism, and uh, increase uh, the plasma bicarbonates. And the main compensatory organ here during uh, the respiratory uh, acidosis is uh, the kidney. The process is uh, of uh, in the uh, kidney the process of the acidogenesis accelerated by kidney and excretion of the acid uh, acid products by kidneys, the hydrogen ions by kidneys, and increase of the reabsorption of the bicarbonates compensates the development of severe acidity. If the process is protracted, uh, protracted non-compensated stage may occur. And during metabolic non-gaseous acidosis, the compensation is ensured by lungs. The rate of the breathing increases, and hyperventilation leads to the elimination of the carbon dioxide from organism. 
but protracted hyperventilation may lead to the um, one of the frequent complications of the non gaseous acidosis, which called Kussmaul respiration, the pathological type of the Kussmaul respiration. As a result of hypocapnia, the respiratory center is not stimulated enough. And uh, the, as a result of loss of uh, the sodium, potassium, calcium ions, uh, water salt metabolism, and uh, cardiac rhythm are disturbed. And disorders of neuromuscular activity, the calcification of the bone may occur. Respiratory alkalosis is observed in cases of hyperventilation of lungs that may develop during protracted artificial respiration with pure oxygen. Fever and tumors of brain all they may lead to the respiratory, respiratory alkalosis. In respiratory alkalosis, compensatory mechanisms are directed to lowering of the content of bicarbonates reabsorption of bicarbonate ions and excretion of the hydrogen ions in kidneys are reduced by a reflex way. So acids are kept in the organism and alkalis are excreted. Together with uh, sodium bihydrocarbonate, much water is excreted in urine which lead to the uh, dehydration of the organism. And in the metabolic, non gaseous alkalosis may develop in cases of intensive reabsorption of alkalines in kidney. Then the loss of acids, for example, during vomiting in the ileus, toxicosis of the pregnancy, gastric hypersecretion, and even long term use of alkaline and administration of the some, uh, some medicines, bicarbonate or other alkaline substances, may lead to the metabolic alkalosis. And compensatory reactions of organism are directed to increase uh, the acids and decrease alkalis. Together with sodium compounds, much water is lost. In severe, case, uh, in severe cases, content of calcium ions is sharply decreased and it may lead to the formation uh, the convulsions. Disturbances in the mineral metabolism are partly determined by insufficient entering and assimilation of these substances in the organism, but they uh, may also result from dysfunction of the endocrine glands, endocrine system, for example, pituitary gland, adrenal, thyroid, parathyroid glands insufficiency, and insufficient entering of the site, uh, some vitamins by food may lead to the disturbance of mineral metabolism. Daily need in sodium is 4-5 grams. The sodium is the main ketion of the extracellular fluid, but in pathological states, uh, the, during, for example, cell injury burns, content of the intracellular sodium is increased. Hypernatremia, the increase of the blood sodium concentration, and the positive sodium balance occurs as a result of the surplus receipt of the salt and disturbed elimination of sodium uh, from the organism, uh, the disturbed elimination of the sodium from the, uh, the organism. For example, during glomerulonephritis, primary and secondary hyperaldosteronism, excessive intake of the glycocorticoids, and so on. Hypernatremia leads to the increase of the osmotic pressure of the blood and extracellular fluid. Uh, intracellular fluid passes into the extracellular space. Surplus of the sodium in extracellular fluid uh, promotes delay of water in the organism and development of edema. Arterial hypertension also develops in hypernatremia. Sodium ions enter the endothelial cells of the muscular wall and this causes the passage of the water into these cells. Uh, they swell and narrow the lumen of the vessels. Hypernatremia is accompanied by disturbance of central nervous system and it, it increases the nerve excitability. Hyponatremia occurs in insufficient receiving or increased loss of sodium by the, by the body, by the organism, and increased sweating, vomiting, diarrhea may lead to the hyponatremia. Disturbance of aldosterone secretion, for example, in Addison diseases, 
may lead to the dissolvers in the reabsorption of the sodium from kidney and organism loss a great amount of the sodium. The same is observed in renal insufficiency. Sodium deficiency leads to decrease in osmotic pressure of the extracellular fluid. Water enters the cell as a result of hyperhydration of the cells of the brain, kidneys, erythrocytes, uh, uh, their function disturbed and hyperhydration of erythrocyte may result in the hemolysis. Decrease of blood concentration of sodium leads to the myasthenia, weakness of the parts, and decreasing of arterial pressure after collapse. This is explained by decrease of the influence of sodium on the action of the adrenaline. As a result of considerable loss of sodium, disturbance of in, uh, the heart activity, muscular adenemia, uh, adenemia develops and appetite is decreased. Hyperkalemia uh, increase of the potassium concentration of blood plasma above 6 mmol per liter. This occurs as a result of excessive intake of food products rich of the potassium. Treatment by high doses of drug containing the potassium and disturbance of excretion of potassium from the organism. Hyperkalemia is uh, the one of the main signs of the Addison diseases. Hyperkalemia is more dangerous than hypokalemia. Uh, plasma concentration of potassium equal to uh, 8 till uh, 13 millimol per liter may cause this as a result of potassium intoxication. This state, uh, this state may develop even after rapid transfusion of the large, a large amount of the blood uh, because pl the potassium goes out of the erythrocytes. And clinical potassium intoxication manifests itself in paresthesia, myasthenia, arrhythmia, bradycardia, and collapse. Hypokalemia decreasing of the blood content of potassium lower than 4 mmol per liter. This occurs uh, in cases of the insufficient intake of potassium in the food, its loss in digestive juice, for example, during vomiting, diarrhea, or increased excretion in urine uh, during hyperaldosteronism, protracted treatment by large doses of the adrenocorticotropic hormone and glycocorticoids. All they may lead to the hypokalemia, loss of the potassium from the organism. Hypokalemia is accompanied by change in potential of nerve and muscle cells and decrease in their excitability. This leads to the hyporeflexia, myasthenia, decreased vascular tension and motility of stomach and intestine, excitability, conduction, and process of repolarization in myocardium are disturbed. In severe case uh, of the cardiac arrest may occur and the severe hypokalemia causes disorders in process of reabsorption and secretion of different substances in a tubular epithelium of the kidney. This occurs as a result of diastolic cardiac arrest. Hypercalcemia uh, means increase the calcium level above the uh, 2-3 mm per liter. Uh, it caused uh, mainly uh, by hyperparathyroidism. On the influence of surplus of the parat hormone, bones lose calcium and bone tissue is uh, replaced by fib fibrous tissue. Bones became soft and osteodystrophy fibrosa, the Recklinghausen disease, develops. The blood content of phosphorus, on the contrary, is decreased as a result of hyperphosphaturia. Sometimes this change leads to the formation of the urinary stones. And certain connection exists between uh, physiological action of the parat hormone and vitamin D. Increase of vitamin D in the organism straighten the action of the parat hormone. Protracted hypercalcemia may lead to the decreased nasal muscular excitability, the increased uh, arterial pressure, hypercoagulation, muscular hypotonia, and nephro and urolithiasis, uh, then osteoporosis and calcinosis of the soft, uh, soft tissue may occur during hypercalcemia. Hypocalcemia, a decrease of the calcium level lower than 2 millimol per liter. Uh, 
this occurs as a result of the hypoparathyroidism. It is accompanied by increased blood content of the organic, inorganic phosphorus, and excretion of calcium and phosphorus in urine is decreasing. Action of calcium ions is antagonistic to that of the potassium ions. Therefore, calcium deficiency causes relative hyperkalemia and excitability of the nerves and muscles and contractibility of muscles change. Cell membrane permeability is increased. Ions move according to the concentration gradient. Membrane potential is decreased. And in muscle cells, spontaneous contractions occur. And free calcium that enters the cells promotes this process. This may lead to the spontaneous convulsions. The mechanism of tetany in hypofunction of parathyroid glands or when they are removed in experiment linked with hypocalcemia. Convulsions set in when blood content of calcium is decreased lower than uh, to the 5, uh, the uh, 7 mg percentage or the 1.25 millimole uh, per liter. In severe cases, feats of tetany cause this as a result of the respiratory, respiratory standstill. Hyperfunction of thyroid gland also is accompanied by hypocalcemia because the, the calcitonin, the, um, the hormone of the, uh, the thyroid gland, promotes passage of the uh, calcium from blood into the bone tissue. Hyperphosphatemia is an increase in plasma phosphate levels above normal. The normal levels are is the uh, 0.8 till 1.45 millimole per liter. Uh, the causes of hyperphosphatemia are uh, the followings. Uh, the excessive intake of phosphates, intravenous or all uh, administration of the phosphate uh, containing drugs, for example. Then impaired excretion of phosphate by kidneys. Uh, during renal failure in the uh, kidney diseases, for example, and excess intake of phosphates in the blood from tissue and cells. For example, in hard physical work, the, during hemolysis, uh, erythrocyte hemolysis, leukemia, and malignant tumors of the bone in crush syndrome, all they may lead to the hyperphosphatemia. Hyperphosphatemia is manifested by several signs, and this creates favorable condition for the formation of the calcification in soft tissue because the main part of oxyapatitis uh, is calcium and phosphatis. Calcification develops in the tissue. As a result of the hyperphosphatemia, blood pressure decrease, heart failure and hypocalcemia are observed. Hypophosphatemia is a plasma phosphate content below normal. The cause of the hypophosphatemia are the followings. Uh, insufficiency intake of phosphorus, for example, during fasting, the hypovitaminosis D, the eating of the phosphate-free foods, then uh, increased secretion, excretion of the phosphate by kidneys, for example, damage of the renal tubulars, uh, poisoning with salts of heavy metals, and even hypoparathyroidism and Fanconi syndrome, all they may lead to the hypophosphatemia. Uh, the, as a result of hypophosphatemia, due, due to in decrease in the content of inorganic phosphorus in the body, a number of signs appear. You see uh, all of them in this slide. And the synthesis of ATP and creatine phosphate reduced, and the synthesis of nucleic acids, the content of inorganic substances in the bones is reduced, and degenerative change develops as osteoporosis, uh, means the softening of the bone tissue, and rickets develop as a result of hypophosphatemia. Then heart failure, disorders of the high nervous system, muscle, uh, hypotension and hypokinesia are also observed during the hypophosphatemia. Disturbance of vitamin metabolism. Vitamins are biologically active substances with a low molecular weight that are important for normal course of metabolism and vital uh, functions of the body. Uh, certain groups of the vitamins are known 
and most uh, vitamins are coenzymes or enzymes. Vitamins are divided in two groups, fat soluble, that are vitamin E, D, E, K, and uh, water soluble, uh, the vitamins, uh, vitamins, uh, the uh, B group vitamins, uh, the P, C group vitamins, and others. The main uh, disorders of the metabolism of vitamins include vitamin deficiency, hypovitaminosis, hypervitaminosis, and dysvitaminosis. Vitamin deficiency develops as a result of lack of the vitamin in the body or uh, the inability to carry out its action. Hypovitaminosis A, you see the signs of these hypovitaminosis in this slide. Uh, it may be hereditary and acquired. The hereditary form of the hypovitaminosis A is rare and this is characterized by impaired cell proliferation and differentiation as well as their destruction. Acquired hypovitaminosis A develops with a deficiency of vitamin A or deficiency of the beta carotene in the food products and disturbance of their absorption from the gastrointestinal tract, uh, for example, deficiency during deficiency of bile acids. Hypovitaminosis A is manifested by a number of the signs. Hemorrhalopia, which means the night blindness, the xeraphthalmia, uh, the, uh, this means the die, uh, drying of the cornea of the eye as a result of the uh, hyperkeratosis of the epithelial cells in the lacrimal ducts, the secretion of the tears decreases, and keratomalacia uh, uh, develops that may lead to the uh, complete uh, blindness, which is called uh, the amblopia. Uh, then change in the epidermis, the skin uh, becomes dry and rough, mainly in the area of knee and elbow joints, uh, there is a popular rush and peeling. Increased change in the epidermis and keratinization of the epithelial membrane occur. And metaplasia of the epithelium uh, of the respiratory tract. Uh, in some places, the single layer epithelium is replaced by squamous epithelium. All these are the signs of the vitamin E deficiency. Vitamin D deficiency. Uh, the firstly, uh, about the normal metabolism uh, of the vitamin D, uh, the slide show us uh, the, the normal metabolism of uh, vitamin D. Uh, synthesized in the skin under the influence of sunlight, the 6 dehydro uh, cholesterol and also vitamin D, which is absorbed from the intestine, uh, they are transported to the liver. And in the liver, it is converted into the 25-hydroxycholecalciferol. Then uh, these substances pass to the kidney, and in the kidney, from these substances, the biological active forms of the vitamin D is formed. And uh, the biological active form of vitamin D is synthesized in kidney. This form provides absorption of calcium and phosphorus from the intestine together with parathyroid hormone, mobilization of calcium from bones, and parathyroid hormone dependent reabsorption of calcium in the distal convoluted tubers of the kidneys. Hypovitaminosis D, uh, the vitamin D deficiency, can be uh, the hereditary and acquired. Acquired hypovitaminosis D occurs as a result of insufficiency uh, intake of the, uh, this uh, with food and the decrease in its formation in the skin and uh, the insufficient sunlight, for example. The cause of hereditary hypovitaminosis D is defects in the genes encoding the proteins that are involved in the metabolism of D, vitamin D. Among the hereditary forms, uh, the familial hypophosphatemic vitamin D resistant rickets is more common. And uh, here in hereditary form, the use of the vitamin D is ineffective. The classic manifestation of acquired and hereditary vitamin D deficiency is rickets. And in this case, the vitamin D deficiency due to impaired absorption of calcium from the intestine, hypocalcemia, hypophosphatemia develops. In hypocalcemia, uh, 
parathyroid hormone secretion uh, increases compensatory. The main signs of rickets are the decreasing of the bone mineralization, the softening of the bones, uh, then the deformation of flat bones of the skull, and muscle hypotension. It develops as a result of impaired innervation and the metabolic processes in the muscle fibers. Vitamin C deficiency. Vitamin C, or ascorbic acid, a water-soluble vitamin, is absor easily absorbed in the intestines and has various uh, action. Uh, it provides collagen synthesis from procollagen. Uh, vitamin C is involved in the metabolism of iron, you know. Uh, it creates condition for the absorption of iron from intestine. And depending on the dose, vitamin C induces antioxidant uh, action in therapeutic doses. And uh, in high doses, it has the pro-oxidant effects. It uh, facilitates the penetration of glucose into the cells. Hypovitaminosis C or vitamin C deficiency lead to the onset of the scurvy disease. The main symptom of this disease is hemorrhagic syndrome, which develops as a result of increased permeability of the vascular wall. Bleeding from the gums, nose, subcutaneous hemorrhage occur. And due to the disturbance in the synthesis of collagen, the attachment of the periosteum to the bone tissue is disrupted and the bones became fragile, easily broken, and the wound healing is became difficult. Uh, the disease is accompanied by uh, muscle atrophy, acute weight loss, iron deficiency, anemia, all they develops during iron, uh, the, the vitamin C deficiency, and corticosteroid deficiency, and decrease in antibody synthesis are observed also. A decrease in antibody synthesis and decrease in the phagocytic activity of neutrophils uh, lead to the immune depression. Uh, thank you for attention.